Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode, and I'm so excited because we have Kristen Barton Cruthrell, who's here, and she is a clinical licensed counselor, and she just opened up her new practice, and she specializes in marriage and individual, but she also specializes in eating and emotional eating disorders, correct? Correct. Okay, so welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. All right, so we're going to dive right in, guys. And we've got a lot of questions. So Aaron in Greensboro says, after reading your book, a big thing I'm trying to work on is eating only when I'm truly hungry. I usually open my window around 12 each day and will eat a bigger lunch. I try keeping my eating window open from 12 to 6, but I'm finding that I'm cramming my last meal in the day when I'm not truly hungry. I'm not going to finish the rest of it because it's so long, but she says, do you have any advice that I can keep my social life, but not forcing myself to eat when I'm not truly hungry and staying in that 12 to six window. What would you say to her? Well, I would say you don't want to, you, you never want to cram food in at, right. at any time because you really don't need to be eating when you're not hungry. Um, but you may want to structure the beginning of your day a little bit differently so that you're, you, you may be hungry by six o'clock to eat mm-hmm. dinner with your friends. You definitely don't want to stop, you know, your whole, whole social well, life. Well, people, people who are thin, what they do is they basically plan their their day out so if they know they're going out to dinner at six o'clock then they at 12 o'clock when they started to eat and they wanted to eat something they would just naturally eat something small right because they knew i don't want to eat too much because i want to make sure that i'm hungry at six six o'clock so if she already knew that she was going to be hungry at six or just don't eat at that meal go ahead and take something home at the restaurant get something and then take it home and then heck if you're gonna eat at eight o'clock make sure the number one most important thing is not eating in the eating window it the number one most important thing is eating when you're physically hungry and you're stopping before you're full that's the key right right so you'd rather eat in an eight hour window and eat, you know, take it whenever you were there at six o'clock, if you weren't really hungry, eat nothing, take something to go. And if you did get hungry, eat that. Or you could get, you know, a small little side salad if you felt like I need to eat something. But, but the key is like, I have so many thin eaters. When you're sitting with them, they don't ever feel like they have to eat. Perfect example. We all went to lunch Two of the thinnest girls said, you know what? I'm not hungry, so I'm not going to eat. I'm just going to enjoy this time with you. And you have to get to a place where you go, it's not that I'm not being social. I can go out to eat with someone and sit there and talk, because that's the whole point, and not eat. It's about the expectation and reframing it in your mind, Um, getting it in your mind that if you're not hungry, this is not necessarily just about going out for the meal. Even before you go, this is about catching up with a friend, and I can catch up with a friend with a glass of ice water and a lemon. Yes, that's right. That's exactly right, because it's like I can get an iced tea, you know, unsweetened iced tea and sit there and, and be happy as a lark. But you, there's, I would say, there's, I would say a good 40% of the time when I go out to eat with someone because I do so many luncheons. Yesterday, we just went to Aldo's, one of my favorite restaurants. Guess what? I didn't eat a thing. Why? Because I wasn't hungry. Then I went, it's so funny because two times in a row, I actually went to Aldo's two times in a row. Um, One yesterday, one the day before, and I didn't eat at either meal because I had forgotten that I was planning that meal and I had already eaten a big lunch and I wasn't hungry right. for dinner. So Again, I think it's about changing the expectation. If you planned to meet a friend at a coffee place, you're going not expecting to eat. You might expect to get a tea mm. or a coffee, but you're not going expecting to eat. I love so that. So when you're going out to dinner before you even go, if you're not hungry, you know, change the way you think about it. I you love know, that. just I'm going to catch up I love with that. a friend. Change your expectation and change your mindset. When you go out to a meal, your your only goal is to socialize and bond with your friends. You don't have to eat or drink 
eat in order to bond. Unless you're really hungry, exactly. Unless you're hungry. Exactly. And when you're hungry, then eat. Exactly. There we go. Katie in Massachusetts. I've been following to the intermittent fasting lifestyle about three months now. I try to stick to a six-hour window with one small snack and one meal. Emphasis on the word try. I do a really good job eating healthy small meals during the day at work, but when I go around, go home around 5 p.m., I'm tired, stressed from a long day, and all I want to do is eat everything in sight. I don't drink wine like a lot of people do to unwind. Eating is literally the only way I know how to unwind. I need some advice to keep me from getting derailed in the evening. What would you say to her? Well, I would say first, we would need to look at what is your one small snack and what is your one small meal um, to just to, to rule out, to make sure you're not, you know, hamster hungry. Yeah. We have to rule yes. that out first yeah. to make sure that you're getting a sufficient meal in the day. Yeah. And in my book, I talk about different levels of hunger and zero is hamster hungry. It means you've gotten yourself to the point that you are just ravenously hungry and you want to make sure that you don't get yourself there. Some people, it's funny, you can teach yourself how to learn how to calm yourself down so that you, when pe- there are certain people I know that can get hamster hungry and they don't overeat, but that's an art in and of itself. Sure. But most people, when they get themselves to that hamster hungry, they cannot control themselves. And then they start eating everything but the kitchen sink. So I would say to her, don't let yourself get there. Eat the five almonds, you know, right. that, that, or whatever your small snack is. Right. And, and when you bring up five almonds, maybe, maybe a, a good suggestion might be come home and eat those five almonds, eat a hard boiled egg, eat something small and then take a walk. See how you feel mm-hmm. when you get back. Yes. You may not want to eat everything then. Yeah. And I think she really needs to find some, cause so one of the things I used to do, um, before I wrote this book, I would come home at say four thirty. And I would be preparing dinner for my family. We eat so early. We're like really early eaters. But I'd prepare dinner. And what I would do is I would just snack on every little thing. So like I was tasting it. Oh, I got to make sure it's good. But then I was tasting like four bites, then adding that. By the time I finished all those bites, we would sit down to dinner. And then I was full because I just snacked and tasted and everything else. And so I had to learn that either I didn't, couldn't snack or by the time it was coming to dinner that I had to be okay with just not eating with the family and enjoying them because I had already eaten my pe- my portion. Right. And I probably recommend, um, you know, for mindful eating so you can really kind of keep track of uh, what you're eating, I would probably recommend if possible to try to refrain from the snacking while you're eating yeah. and sit down with your family, family and have and a meal. Enjoy. Yeah. yeah. I agree. And so... The thing is, is that she's got to change her routine at night. Like she's, she's got to come up with a new routine that goes, okay, I'm going to, as soon as I get home, I'm going to eat and then I'm going to do, you know, then I'm going to go for a walk. Then I'm going to go for a bath. Then I'm going to read a book. But her routine is I come home and then I just eat, 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 eat. She's got to retrain her brain. Mm -hmm. And that may take a few weeks of a new routine because your brain expects what it's used to. Mm Mm-hmm. So this one, it didn't give us a name for who it was. This was anonymous. She says, I do a really good job at home with stocking my house with mostly mostly healthier foods and more natural treats. It really helps me to stay on track. The problem is the people I work with don't have the same mindset. They are constantly bringing junk food in the office, Dunkin' Donuts, pizza, candy. I sometimes I feel like a work I work at a buffet. <laughs> Do you have any advice for how I can handle working in this perpetual potluck? That's cute. This is this cute. This is a perpetual no, this is potluck. potluck. This is cute. And I have to say, I have definitely, absolutely been in those situations. And they're really tough when you have all this yummy, maybe unhealthy food around you. But there's two things to this. One um, is, of course, you have to be mindful. And you have to ask yourself before you pick up that piece of pizza and that donut, am I really hungry? Um, first, ask yourself that. If you find that, yes, I am hungry, then maybe you need to bring some healthier uh, snacks to work and have that hard-boiled egg. Or so have so car- let's, let's really dive in because okay. I agree 100% because if you see the donuts and you're physically hungry and you go, yeah, I'm really craving, I can eat half of a donut or whatever, but the problem is is 
what what people will do is they'll bring let's say a bag of carrots and a bag of cauliflower right and then they would say okay well instead of eating the donuts i'll go have the carrots and cauliflower which would be fine if you are truly hungry what happens is is if you go oh my gosh i see the donuts i want them but instead i'm going to go for the cauliflower and the carrots even though i'm not hungry that's where people get into a pickle because again you're training your brain that when I see this or even though I'm not hungry, it's okay if I eat and that's what we're trying to get rid of. You, If you're not physically hungry, you should never be eating. Well, one thing that has worked, it's really helped me and I know that it has helped a lot of my clients is uh, visualization. Mm. Really stop and visualize that if it were that salad in front of you, if it were some carrots in front of you, um, a veggie tray in front of you. Would you want to eat it? And if the answer is no, you know what? I'm, I'm really not craving that. That's in, probably an indication that you're not hungry. Right. Very good. All right, Colleen, and she says, on the road, I'm a truck driver. Female truckers represent. All right. I really love my job. It sounds like yeah. it. And I love listening to your podcast while I'm on the road to pass time, which brings me to my issue, passing time. I've got a lot of time to pass, which leads me to a lot of eating when I'm not truly hungry. I try to switch things up and eat things like sunflower seeds or peanuts, but these still have cal calories and still qualify as food. Another career is not an option right now, but I really want to start living by the principles of eating healthy and need to stop my snacking. Any advice? Okay, well, I'm looking at this part where she says a lot of eating when I am not truly yes. hungry. So I, I saw that right away. And, um, you know, a lot of times we eat to escape. We eat, mm. we're talking about emotional eating here. And a lot of times we actually eat to escape our feelings. We, uh, depending on the person, we do a lot of things to escape our feelings. Mm. People can overwork, they can drink, they can eat. And um, there's all kinds of things. So I would want to say to Colleen to do a little bit of self-investigating and see what happens if you don't eat, if you're not hungry and you, you're driving along and you just sit with those feelings. What comes up? Um, and, and not take a judgment to it. Not it's good or bad, it's bad, it just is. Because I'm, you know, I don't know Colleen, so Colleen, I, I don't know if there anything, if there's any escape there, but a lot of times people are eating when they're not hungry to escape some kind of feeling. And I believe that we need to be able to sit with our unease to prevent disease. Mm. And people try to often... Say that again, because I think it's okay. so powerful. Okay, we need to sit sometime with our unease to prevent disease. You mm. see, when we start having uh, shameful, painful, any kind of emotions arise, we want to self-medicate. We want to feel better, and we want to feel better instantly. Mm. But you know what? This too shall pass. Mm -hmm. If we allow ourselves sometimes to sit with that unease. Well, you first have to ask yourself, what am I feeling, right? Because right. like, so for me, one of the things, like, you know, I work hard and when I go to work, I am in grind mode. Like I don't play around, you know, I play, but not much. I'm very focused on the prize and let's go, let's get it, da, 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 let's get it done. So when I get home, I'm exhausted. Um, I might be feeling stressed. Like one of the biggest things that stresses me at work is we have some computer programmers that we work with, you know, like that aren't here locally. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't have control over them. So sometimes they're so slow and we're waiting on them to fix some, some things. And so that stresses me out, right? Because right. it's like, I don't have control. I can't do pro computer programs, so I can't just do it myself. Right. I'm relying on them. So I have to come home and go, okay, what am I feeling right now? Uh, that's powerful. I'm so so. Let's talk about. So if that was me, what are the emotions? So I just kind of told you that story. What would be the emotions that I would be feeling right then? Well, lack of control, frustration, lack of frustration, um, powerlessness. So what kind of self talk would I say to myself? So like, here it is. I just got home. I'm feeling stressed. What am I, what, what's that positive self-talk that I'm giving myself? What should I be saying to myself? Let's just pretend it was one of those days, the computer people, they didn't do what they were supposed to do. They're not responsive. We're waiting on a computer glitch, you know, in one of our programs to get fixed. What would I say to myself to get myself off the ledge 
of ha eating everything but the kitchen okay, sink. Okay, I'm uh, first of all, am I really hungry? And if you determine no, yes. you're not, mm -hmm. then it's okay. How am I feeling? If you identify, I am feeling powerless. I'm feeling like I I don't have power over this situation. I don't have control over it. Um, I'm feeling power, a sense of powerlessness. Then it would be okay. What do I want? What do I want to do? Oh, well, I want to go eat. Why? Because it's going to make me feel better. Mm. Okay. And then you say, you know what? I can sit with this. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll breathe. I'll go for a walk. I'll pray. I'll do something else. And I'm going to sit with this because eventually these feelings will pass. I don't need to jump in to unhealthy behaviors to numb them out. Yes. And I understand by me eating right now, it's only going... So you have to say that stuff out loud. Yes. I understand... By me eating right now, first of all, if I'm not physically hungry, what I'm doing is self-medicating. I'm not going to self-medicate anymore. I'm going to go to God with my stress and my anxiety, and I'm going to quote Bible verses or whatever you want to do right then, but you're going to say, I'm... I'm only making this problem worse. All my, whatever it is that I'm stressed, yes. I'm making all these problems worse by eating right now. And then start going through those negative, so then what would I say of the well, negative consequences? Well, one thing I want to bring up I think is really important is we have a part of our brain called the amygdala. And that's the emotional response system that goes into fight or flight when we feel threatened. So if you're feeling powerless over your situation, that's a threat. And what you're doing, you're not fighting, you're going into flight mode when you're, you're stress eating because you're numbing it out. You're flying from the emotions through food. So just even identifying that, no, you know what? I'm not gonna fly from these emotions by self-medicating with food. I'm gonna sit with them a little bit. I'm gonna pray, pray about it and it will pass. Yes, so I'm laughing right now because, so uh, Kristen has a four week marriage Bible study, or just a marriage study that yeah, she does. Uh, it's a class workshop. that she, it's like a workshop that she does for four weeks. It's just one night a week. She does them regularly. Actually, you're gonna do one in October Excited. coming up. Yes. Yep, she's gonna do one uh, at my house for four weeks. So if you're interested in that, let us know. Uh, we're going to probably do it on a Tuesday or Wednesday night, yeah, it's a depending on what intimacy class. Yeah. yeah, it's called connection and intimacy. And I will tell you, it absolutely changed my marriage, my husband. So one night I got to tell this story. One night we came home and I had Tuesday night, I had made chicken and broccoli, but I had also planned to prepare the Wednesday night meal. So I had made spaghetti for Wednesday, but my husband on Tuesday night ate the spaghetti and the chicken. And then on Wednesday was what I was planning on spaghetti. And then Thursday, I was going to be planned for leftovers. So on Thursday, Ryan came to me and said, what? We're having spaghetti again for the third night in a row? And I was like, what? First of all, it was only supposed to be for Wednesday. And then Thursday was going to be leftovers. But you ate the spaghetti. You know, and I just started going Absolutely. off. Absolutely. So, and he, because he learned this in the class, he said, you're in a hurricane right now and I'm going to give you some of my calm and this is your amygdala freaking out and that's okay. I'm going to give you some of my calm right now. And we both started hysterically laughing because it was just so funny. He let funny. you borrow his calm. Yeah, he, yes, <laughs> yes. And it was so funny. So... Talk about that for a minute of how we can take that. And you and I have talked about this. I think the deeper issue is what you heard him saying or how it made you feel is, hey, you're not being either a good enough wife or mom. Of course, this yes. is not the, what he meant. Right. But you're not being a good enough wife or mom if you're fixing us the same thing. Yes. Three that's, times, and that three was days. the emotion. So the emotions I was feeling you felt was threatened. I felt threatened. I felt unappreciated because you felt like he he was saying you weren't good enough. Yes, which wasn't and I the felt case. not good enough of a good enough mom, mm -hmm. good enough wife, all of that. So that's why your amygdala got triggered and you yes. went into fight mode, and, yes. and just maybe with your tone of voice, yes, it might have been exactly. fight mode. And um, he. He calmed you down with humor. <laughs> yeah, he did. He calmed me down with humor, and we were fine, and and everything okay. was great. So okay, so. Back to this, we just finished Colleen. So anything else as far as what she can say to herself when she's not physically hungry and is feeling like she wants to eat? I think she can just say, you know, is there something else coming up? What happens if I spend uh, the next hour on the road just simply 
driving and see just see what comes up well that that's a great point and for her because she is a trucker the the truck driver the great idea for her would be i wouldn't plan one single snack in my my car once i started feeling hungry i would pull over and you know go get it or put your lunch bag in the way back and don't pull it out until you feel like your stomach's growling and you have tr- true physical hunger absolutely now you're gonna eat so do some things like that hey guys i'm so excited that my new book waste away the chantelle rayway is now available on amazon barnes and noble and pretty much anywhere you can find books but we also have the audio book the ebook and my new recipe book that you can download all the recipes that i love that i make and it's super cheap it's all my favorites Anyway, if you have a minute to write a review on Amazon, I would be ever grateful. Um, This one is from Anonymous. We have a lot of Anonymous this week. My boyfriend and I broke up a few months ago. I'm sorry about that. Uh, And I know it was for the best, but I really miss all the fun things we did together on the weekends. I'm not starting to date right now and don't want to rebound. But since I'm not dating anyone, I spend a lot of time alone at home on the weekends, which means a lot of takeout, cookie dough, and oh, what should I order tonight? I know this isn't a good idea, especially when I, especially since I will need to get back on the dating scene scene eventually. LOL, any advice? Well, you should have sent us your picture and we could have posted. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, but so what, what would you say to her? Well, you know, the, the first thing I would want to say is it may be a good idea to uh, get a fun new cookbook and, and spend some time trying to cook up some healthy meals rather than turning to the cookie dough. But there's a bigger picture here. A lot of times uh, people present to you what's what I call a presenting issue and it it goes a little deeper than this. And so I just want to go a little bit deeper. Um, She's just, she's going through a breakup and I can only imagine that that is difficult. And she needs to be able to treat herself through this time with self-compassion, treating herself with kindness. And she may think that ordering something out or, or baking cookies is treating herself with compassion and kindness. But, but really what would be treating herself with compassion and kindness is taking time to really nurture herself uh, and feed her foods that are healthy for her and, and spend that evening taking a walk and doing really healthy things. And she should be spending some more time with friends. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Constance in Pensacola. I love the podcast you did a few months about emotional eating. I took the quiz you made online and identified as a stress eater. No surprise there. I have three small kids and I'm constantly chasing around and I'm so busy feeding them that I don't take time to prepare my own healthy meals. So I just grab anything I can, put my hands on whenever I get the chance. My husband is deployed right now, so I'm at an all-time stress high. I know I shouldn't be turning to food for the fix, but I just can't stop. Admitting that I have a problem is the first step, right? Question mark. (laughs) Now I need some tips to help me stop. Please help. What would you say to her? Well, she definitely needs to work on Mm -hmm. self-care. You know, just you and I were talking the other day how important it is um, in using the metaphor of the airplane. Yes. You know, you need to put the air mask on yourself before you Mm. can help your child. Yes. She needs to invest in herself. I know that time is limited, but she needs to make sure she does have healthy options. And she needs to really, we go back to that self-compassion thing. She needs Mm -hmm. to really care for herself so she can adequately care for others. Yeah, and I see that with moms all the time that they worry about what the kids want to eat and then they're just picking off their plate. And it's like, no, you plan what you want for dinner and then the kids can have some of what that you are planning for dinner. And, you know, if they don't like it, then... Uh, sorry. <laughs> you know, it's just like, well, you can't be constantly catering to every little whim of the kids. You've got to put your needs as priority and then you'll be so much better as a mom. Absolutely. And I think that you have to watch your self-talk, make sure it's positive self, self-talk. I am worth it. Yes. I am doing, I love that. A, I'm, I'm doing, I know I'm not perfect. Nobody is perfect. Yes. I'm doing the best I can right now yes. and I am worth it. And we need to also say, first of all, Constance, thank you so much for your service to the military because I don't think people realize when you are a, a mom of someone who's in the service, you're doing 
a lot for our country as well, taking care of that family. And so we just appreciate you and appreciate you. Absolutely. Husband. It's a team effort. That, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Carrie in Knoxville, a friend of mine that is really into fitness, recommended that I tried keeping a food journal and recording the food that I ate. I feel like this would cause me to obsess over everything I ate. And it almost goes against what you talk about in your book with making food an idol. Have you ever kept a food journal and do you recommend this? Well, I think if you can stick to the program without the food journal, um, that's great. But if you're having struggles and you'd like to keep a food journal, I think a food journal can be very beneficial temporarily to actually see what you're taking in. I know that um, that my husband was uh, drinking, he eating really healthy foods and and trying to be as healthy as he can and he was drinking a smoothie every single morning yes and when he actually temporarily kept a food journal to see exactly what he was putting in the smoothie he realized he was taking in over 800 calories for breakfast and that's just too much so in that I did case, the exact same thing and I will tell you you have to be really really careful with smoothies um, for for me when I I went for a couple weeks and I was eating the cleanest I've ever ate in my entire life and probably about three weeks and I gained eight pounds in, in three mm. weeks. And mm. I was trying to figure out, oh my God, I'm eating the cleanest I've ever eaten and why am I gaining this weight? It was because I was adding in smoothies into my diet and when I was realizing, once I just figured out how many calories that smoothie was, it was like 850 calories in my yeah. smoothie. Yeah. Like whole coconut milk, which is absolutely amazing for you. A can of coconut milk, depending on which kind you get, can be 600 calories just for the can. Wow. So if you use half of it to make your smoothie, that's 300 calories right there and then whatever else you put in it. So absolutely, I think a food journal is a great idea for a short-term time to really make you aware of some of these things, like what's going on. If you're able to do it without it, there is no thin eater out there. I can promise you on all the people I interviewed that says, oh, I, I keep a food journal and I figure out what I'm eating right. and how many calories. They, right. If they did that, they didn't count as one of my naturally thin eaters. And so I, I don't love the idea for long term. I love the idea because for it can short. become yes. compulsive. So first, do it by compulsive. just figuring out: Am I hungry? Then I can eat. I'm stopping before I'm full. Do that method. If you're not losing weight and you're stuck, absolutely, this is a great idea to figure out what is going on, just like figuring out, okay, I'm, yeah, no wonder I'm not losing weight. I'm eating an 850 calorie smoothie and adding on to everything else I'm eating. It just right. doesn't work. Right. All right. Rebecca in Virginia Beach. I work in real estate just like you, Chantel, and as you can understand, it's very stressful. It is stressful. Uh, and she said, I spend my entire day trying to keep everyone happy, and in the evening, all I want to do is unwind with some wine or vodka. I don't go crazy binge drinking, but I find myself pretty much drinking every day. Where do I draw the line and recognize the difference between drinking to unwind from my stressful career or having it become too much and borderline alcoholic? Okay, well, first I wanna say trying to keep everyone happy, that's great, but again, <laughs> we go back to self-compassion. Make sure that you tend and befriend, I've heard, I heard that from uh, someone else, that's not my term, but mm -hmm. tend and befriend yourself oh, I like and that. your own feelings. Tend and befriend yourself, that's not my term, but I like it. Okay, and also, I look at her question, how do I uh, recognize the difference between drinking to unwind from a stressful career and becoming dependent, borderline alcoholic? Well, what I have to say, is it sounds like you're not abusing alcohol, it doesn't sound like you're binging, but the dependence piece. Um, alcoholism is a progressive disease, so you would wanna ask yourself, are you continuing to drink more and more to get the same effect? Are you blacking out? Um, how do you feel a lot of guilt about your drinking? There are, there are questions you can ask yourself to, to see if you may have a problem with dependence. Yeah. And I also think that she has to ask herself, you know, am I using this want this wine for, you know, if I'm needing it every single night, mm -hmm. I think that's a red flag right there. So I think for me, I would say, try, try cutting it out for a little while and seeing, you know, am I able to do it? Am I able to do it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Have you tried to cut it out before and you're unable is, a, is an absolute question you need to ask yourself. So I've got another anonymous. People are usually really good about saying what their name is, where they're from, but lately we're having a lot of anonymous. 
I was a size two when I was married and fast forward 10 years and a couple of kids, I'm now in size double digits. He probably doesn't realize how hurtful he's being and makes he makes thoughtless comments all the way all the time about the way I used to look or about joining the gym. I know I should talk to him about how this makes me feel, but it's honestly just awkward. I find myself keeping my feelings inside when he's not around and I binge out on junk food when he's behind, when I binge out on junk food behind his back. I know this is a messed up way of eating, but at the time I feel like I'm getting back at him for trying to control what I eat. So, how can I tackle this tough situation and try to repair my marriage and my outlook on food? First of all, I would say we need to work on communication and I and I feel a lot of times in situations like this, what may be holding the person back from talking to their husband is that they actually feel a lot of internal shame. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so use I statements and definitely let your husband know how these comments are making you so feel. So let's do, a, I'll protect, you just talk to me, okay? So I'm going to be the husband. <laughs> we'll pretend like I'm the husband. You be her. Uh what would you what would you say to her or what would you say to him so let's just pretend my name is bob when you talk about how i used to look and um and 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 when you tell me i need to go to the gym it, i feel shameful i feel embarrassed i feel angry i feel like you don't think i'm pretty enough sexy enough and i don't feel like you're attracted to me and this makes me hurt mm. i feel hurt Good. I love it. All right. Catherine in Baltimore. I struggle with crazy anxiety, but have been, it's so funny. I was like, (laughs) I was pretending to be Bob and I was like, okay, great. Next question. (laughs) Catherine in Baltimore. I struggle with crazy anxiety, but have been slowly weaning off my meds because the side effects were getting to be too much. I've been doing a lot of things like yoga, meditation, Bible reading, going for walks, which you've talked about before, but I still have nights that I'm I'm crazy anxious and all I want to do is eat. The other night I found myself in bed with a two with two big bite hot dogs from 7-Eleven and a 20 ounce of Ying what is it Yingling? <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink beer, you can you can tell. Um, just to make me feel better. What are some other ways that I can combat my nighttime anxiety? Okay, well first That's of all, hysterical. <laughs> two two big bite hot dogs from 7-Eleven and a 20 ounce yingling. <laughs> oh okay, my gosh. But, uh, but I understand that having crazy overwhelming anxiety where you feel like you're jump, gonna jump out of your skin is terribly uncomfortable. So let, let's do self-talk. Ang- so, she, okay, so you're ang- Catherine right now. Well, what should she say to herself? What is she saying to herself right now before she gets in the car and goes to 7-Eleven? Well, anxiety, first of all. Anxiety okay, let's talk is, about that. No, that's, no, anxiety is fear. Mm-hmm. So again, you'll see a theme here. We need to be able to sit with it, not self-medicate mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. There's the anxiety. There's she's ha- Catherine's having anxiety for a reason. But if every time that crazy anxiety starts to come up, she she runs from that anxiety by numbing it out and self-medicating with food. She's not sitting with it mm-hmm. to to find out to explore. Where is it coming from? To feel unease is to prevent disease. It's that 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 amygdala is firing. It's you're you're just instead of flying from it, see what comes up, and then you know what? If you haven't already worked with a therapist, maybe a, a counselor, mm. a therapist, good idea to get to the bottom of the anxiety. Mm. Let's get to the root. Right. That that's so good because we're we're never getting down to the root issue. It's just like you know with Tylenol. It's like everyone's taking Tylenol, but not figuring out what's causing my headache. Am I dehydrated? Let me go drink some water. You know, whatever it is, let's get down to the root and, and ask yourself, why am I so anxious? What am I anxious yeah. about? So and do you know, that Chantel, self-talk with Okay, her. but Chantel, one more thing. There's, there, um, I know we don't have enough time on your program today, but there are all kinds of healthy tools to reduce mm-hmm. anxiety. Okay, yeah. so let's talk about some of those. Well, uh, you hear people say, take a deep breath. And sometimes Mm -hmm. that can be annoying when you're Mm -hmm. anxious. But actually, there's research to show that those deep breath, that deep breathing. That's why people love smoking. Because what are you doing? You're taking a breath. The deep. And exhaling. You're inhaling and exhaling. The deep breathing calms down the amygdala. Mm. Um, You know, exercise. I like that she's already doing some yoga and meditation. Um, Continue that. 
uh, prayer, taking long walks, changing your mindset mm -hmm. from a, a, a fear-based to realizing, you know what, fear is not from God. Mm -hmm. What is it that you're anxious about? What would you say if you had to say this this causes anxiety for me. What would that be for you? You know that uh, last September I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm. So I've been through chemotherapy and radiation and I'm actually doing well. Yeah. But I will tell you that there are times where, you know, I feel a little ache, I feel a little pain mm -hmm. um, and it sparks some anxiety in me. Mm -hmm. It really does. So what do you have to do? What's the self-talk that you have to say to yourself when you're starting to get anxious? What do you say to yourself? Well, I, I start with taking some deep breaths mm -hmm. and I don't judge my feelings. Mm -hmm. I say to myself, okay, what's going on here? What's making me anxious? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I can, can, right now I can sometimes identify it's health related. And then I say, you know, I am, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to totally rely on my faith because fear is not from God. Yes. You know, I'm going to leave it mm -hmm. up to God. I am going to, um, I have, I've, I eat healthier now. Mm -hmm. I've changed some patterns. Um, I try to take long walks every day. Um, I've changed some of my behaviors and I protect my mindset. I try not to allow um, things, uh, you know, I, I try not to spend a lot of time with negative people. I like to hang out with people who inspire me and I, I try to protect my mindset and that mm -hmm. helps a lot. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I think that, you know, if somebody told me that I had stage four cancer and there was nothing I could do. Uh, would I, someone said, would you be anxious? And I said, no, I would not be anxious at all because I know a hundred percent from the, for now that when I die, 100% I'm going to be in heaven. And the Bible says there'll be no more tears, no more sadness, no more pain. And you know, the truth of the matter is I love what John Maxwell says. He says, life is up hill all the way right. no matter what it doesn't right. matter who you are doesn't matter anything about you every person life is uphill all the way and the truth is is that if if that was what god allowed for me to get that cancer and i couldn't do anything to fix it then what would i be anxious about because i know that god's going to take care of my family better than i ever could right mm -hmm. and that he you know, the Bible says that the, even the the birds, they don't worry about what they're going to eat because they know that God's going to take care of them. And so quoting those promises that God's given us in, in the Bible, in my opinion, is the most magical thing you, you know, can Chantel, do. No, Chantel, absolutely. And I've even got this box of index cards and I read mm -hmm. my morning devotionals and, and write things from that on there and scripture on that. My dad told me one time, remember what you already know. Mm -hmm. And that was some of the best advice I've ever mm -hmm. gotten because... I know this stuff, but sometimes we need little reminders. Yeah, yeah. and the self-talk for you would be like, you know, I know that God's already healed me once. If he's, you know, if this comes back, either he'll choose to heal me, but even if he doesn't, he is going to provide for my family and I'm going to have no more pain, no more sadness, and he's... He's got it, basically. He's got us covered. Right, and I really firmly believe right now that I am. this is all part of my purpose. I'm supposed to yes. use this to help others. Yes, yeah. absolutely. All right, last one, and I don't know what, who this is from either, but she says, I really want to quit smoking for multiple of obvious reasons, but every single person I talk to has quit smoking has told me they've gained tons of weight. It makes sense, and it's easy to assume that they are replacing their cigarette addiction with a food addiction, which is the absolute last thing I need. I don't want this to be an excuse that keeps me from quitting. Do you have any advice to help me stop smoking without packing on the pounds? Well, I, again, I, we need to be able to sit with our feelings, yes. you know, what's sit, put down the cigarettes. Mm -hmm. If you're not hungry, put down the food. What's arising, pay mm -hmm. attention to it without judgment. It's not good or bad. Mm -hmm. What is arising in you that is making you want to pick up that food and that cigarette to probably run away from And like something? you said, again, it's sit with our unease to, to prevent, prevent disease. disease. I mean, everyone needs to memorize that. Sit with our unease to prevent disease. So when I'm feeling stressed, when I'm feeling anxious, 
I'm just going to sit with that emotion and be like, it's okay. This too shall pass. Yes. Ride, you know what? I Ride the wave. Yes. Ride that wave. And just, just say to yourself, it. life is uphill all, all the, the way. way. doesn't matter who you are. You've got some uphill battles. And you know what? That's okay. And you know what? If you sit with it and you yes. ride that wave, it will pass. Yes, it will. It always does. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. And Kristen, thank you so much for joining us. It's always a joy to have you on our show. And if you, if people want to know more about you, let me ask you this, because we honestly now have gotten to the point that we have more listeners outside of the state of Virginia and Hampton Roads than we do actually in uh, Hampton Roads. We actually can see where the listeners are listening from. And so you tell us, can you do phone counseling for people? Yes, and I do a lot of video co- awesome. do video coaching. Video mm-hmm. coaching. I love mm-hmm. that. Absolutely. So if you live in, in Maine, no problem. We've got a lot of people you saw from all over. So tell people how they get in contact with you, what your website is. How do they reach you? Okay, my website is thesnowballeffect.com. Which this is a great point right here. She wrote, Kristen wrote this book that is absolutely amazing. It's called The Snowfall, Snowball Effect. How to Build Positive Momentum in Your yes. Life. Yes, yeah. and tell us, tell us a little bit about that book. Um, well, I published it a few years ago, and it's just what I have seen work in my life and, and uh, a lot of my clients' life. And it, it's about letting go of resentment and harsh self-judgments and yeah. overreactivity and, and just really letting in the good of life. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Love it. And so that's your website. And what is the, the best way for them to contact you? Um, either they, they can either take a look at my website or um, if you have a little pen to write this down, the best number to reach me is 757-797-5204. All right. Well, if you want a question answered, go to questions at ChantelRayWay.com and we'd love to answer them. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you.